this is the import. I was going to make a video about this too. This is the importance of using our disc over the internal pink noise in your AVR or pre pro. Because when you're using the internal pink noise, it is just sending pink noise to a speaker terminal. And if you have that speaker terminal connected to the correct speaker, then voila, you've got pink noise coming out of the correct speaker. However, as soon as you use our disc, and this is what happened to a few of, of our customers, uh, it starts incorporating all the settings of your AVR pre-pro, and all of a sudden, this guy was not getting any pink noise out of his front wide speakers. Now, Tim, who also does our um, our customer service, so thank you, Tim, for helping Tim him out. Busy. We keep Tim very busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, finally, uh, the guy, I guess, was gone for a few days, and we we came up with a whole bunch of different like ideas on like why it's not working. And it turns out he just did a reset, a factory reset, and then he loaded his settings back on and they started working again. So he was going six months. And this is what the Marantz AV10, $7,000, $7,000, and it's not working right. Okay? Goes to you show you. took the time to set up wides. You bought the wides. Bought the you wide. wired them up. You bought a receiver that could do wides. Yeah, it's and, not then there's, lights. And, and, and so he was under the impression until he used our disc, he had no idea that he wasn't hearing anything from the wides. Think about that. Six months, I, I was like, oh, man, you, it looks like you got to rewatch everything. <laughs> you got to rewatch everything. Um, that was, 99, that was bucks. 99 bucks. It's like, you know, uh, if you get the physical one, depending on where you are, sometimes shipping is expensive, depending yeah. on where they're at. So I get that. It's not the cheapest disc, but. It also, you know, if it makes your system sound better, it actually makes your, you know, thousands of dollars do what the thousands of dollars are supposed to do. Yeah, and like dude, it's not very much, right? I think it's it's not until this product that Joe and I created that we can actually test our AVR to see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And like how how like when you when when I phrase it like that or when I thought about it like that, how on earth are we letting these companies just get away? <laughs> SAC is, is that target for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's shipped by us. <laughs> How did that happen? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Kanga, you know the um, the import taxes to Canada are like almost another fifty to sixty Canadian. So you're almost paying double. It's 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 pretty wild. It's blame pretty your wild. government. Don't blame us, though. Please. Yeah, we we have nothing. We to have do nothing that. to do with that stuff. But it, but it's it just goes to show you that. Um, what we did create, uh, and Joe and I were talking about this, it is actually amazing. What we did create is amazing because now it gives you, the consumer, you, the user of this, whatever it is, a $500 receiver to $1,100 to $2,000 to $30,000. Make sure your receiver is actually doing what it's advertised, right? Um, Joe worked with a guy for um, four hours until they figured out what was going on. And his, he had an 8805 Marantz processor, which is the biggest processor that they had uh, at the time before the AV-10. And he could not get the middle heights to fire properly. And he had that thing for a couple of years. And finally, it was a, just about one setting. And he said the same thing. Oh, the pink noise uh, from the internal is going to the correct speaker. But when I play on you your disc. Tell. Yeah. Yeah. You he can't tell that. using the internal pink noise. It just it it doesn't work like that. It's, it just sends a pink noise signal to a speaker terminal, and if you got the speaker connect 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 correct speaker connected, you're good. But once Atmos is engaged, he it, it, we kept what do you say? It came out the rear height rears. I don't something. remember what the issue was. I kind of blanked it out. I don't want to. <laughs> He's like, that's four hours. I won't get back. And it, and it was just it was uh, just about the issue setting. though, huh? What was the issue, though? So he had heights in the front, heights in the rear, oh. and heights on the surround. So he chose uh, it was surround, surround high height instead of uh, top instead middle. Of top middle. So that's when we found out that if you're running six height channels on a Denon or Marantz, if it's not six in ceiling speakers, and if you're you got to set it up as front height, rear height, and top middle. If you set it up with surround height, that will negate any middle in the middle height. That all just mm -hmm. it all just mess it up, and so. That guy had his for a couple of years and it was yeah. just wrong. It was just wrong the whole time. Like, man, you got a lot of catching up to you. You got to rewatch a whole well, lot of content. You know, we have, a lot of, we have a lot of people also commenting that 
that they have, you know, 7.1.4 or something like that. And they're when they're watching movies, they hear height stuff, right? But when they use our disc, it's only ear level. And what is actually happening is, you know, somehow they're not getting the full Dolby Atmos signal. They're actually just up mixing 7.1. You know, they might have a setting incorrect in their Blu-ray player or something like that. And it's funny because like they're like, you mean I haven't been getting discrete content to my height channels? Like now you are, you know, you kind of yeah. keep it on the up and up, but it's, you're like, yeah, yeah, you're good to go now. But yeah, that's yeah, rough. Yeah. Imagine you're yeah. like, you're thinking it sounds great. You're enjoying everything. It's just up mixing. And the people were hating on us for, oh, Oro 3D up mixing. I'm like, you guys are, this guy's been doing the same thing. He's been up mixing using the Dolby up mixer. It's not actually Atmo. So that happens more often than you might think. It's yeah. like, not like a here and there. It's like happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely. That's where a place to spend money. Spend it with us. Spatial <laughs> Toolkit. We, we took a long time to make this because nobody else has this. And we're still the one, only one that has all these tests. And, you know, still the first and still most comprehensive way. There's no need to make another one. Your Dolby Atmos home theater. Michael Squirrel Squire says, uh, I always see, see squirrels, man. I think. I think I just, I think I need some more reading. I think I need some more reading in my life. Top, middle, and rear surround were, were reversed to me. Uh, Chris, uh-huh. he, he meant the uh, spatial audio calibration toolkit. Sometimes people say SACD, which then now makes things, you think it's mm. a super audio CD. Yeah. No, it's yeah, yeah. spatial audio calibration toolkit. toolkit. Yeah. But, okay. Um, All right. Should we get into, uh, uh, e- into what? Some of these starred questions or whatever. Yeah, I'll, just real quick, I want to add to that last yeah, thing. Is okay. this like, you know, I know a lot of people want magic beans already. It's one of those things I, I keep saying. I, it needs to be working in a way that I'm comfortable releasing it to everybody. Like recently, we did an update, made stuff look a lot better, and I went to export it. It wouldn't export on my phone. So I can't have issues like that where it's just not working properly. Like everything works. Like the process works. It's just making an app is is tricky. You can fix or change one thing and it messes up the rest. I don't want anybody to have that experience. So, uh, definitely I would say I, you know, I don't think a rental would like me saying this, but out of the box, out of the box, if I compared my Encore T6, these inexpensive ones with my magic beans, true target calibration, tonally, I prefer those over the arendals out of the box. Now, if I do Magic Beans True Target on the Arendels, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna beat the uh, you know the Encore T6, so they have more potential. But um, it's just something like that. Like you can have great sound as long as you have decent speakers and you calibrate them properly. That's all. That's my pitch. All right, everybody, we do the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you join up to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily hi-fi, and we will see you there for the big show every Monday. Yeah.